In the time before the Titans, before the gods of Olympus, a great battle was waged. The wrath of the primordials. The very beings who forged the Earth. Raged out of control for an eternity. Zeus must be stopped, Kratos. The story of revenge has been told before. You know of the mighty titan Kronos. So fearful was Kronos of the Oracle's prediction that his own children would rise against him, that he decided to imprison them all in his belly. Rhea stood by and watched as her children were devoured one by one. But when the time came for the last of her children to be eaten, she was unable to bear another such loss and devised a trick to save the baby Zeus. Rhea commanded the eagle to secret her son away. He was taken to an island far beyond the watchful eyes of Kronos. his desire to free his brothers and sisters from Kronos. But my foolish act of compassion would haunt the Titans forever. For in sparing Zeus, we allowed him to return to us with vengeance in his heart. He betrayed all of the Titans for the sins of just one. The sins of his father, Kronos. Bloodlust and power raged within Zeus. His desire to rule over mortals was intolerable to us. The war between the Titans and the Olympians forged the landscape of the mortal world. It was a war that we knew the Titans must win. If we lost, it would mean an end to the golden age of the Titan rule. Peace and prosperity for mankind would be no more. continued despite my capture. Then Zeus created a powerful weapon to end the Great War. A weapon forged from the heavens and the earth. The Blade of Olympus. 
I banish you to the darkest pits of Tartarus! Born out of wedlock, Kratos was the bastard child of a shunned woman. There were rumors as to who the father was. Rumors that grew more and more preposterous. Until the woman finally left her small village. She swore a new life in Sparta. Kratos would never know the truth. Never know who his father really was. The god of war has been plotting for years. In rage and insanity, Ares hoped to conceive the perfect boy. I sought counsel with Aletheia. It was she who revealed to me the plot of Ares to overthrow Zeus. But he needed the perfect warrior. Ares molded you to take down the very walls of Olympus. Ares, destroy my enemies, and my life is yours! You behold, and only to him, Ares and my mothers devised three blood tasks. Spill the blood of your enemies. The blood of the innocent. The blood of your very... The past is the past, Orgos! stands tall for battle. You are a Spartan, are you not? Yes, Kratos. After the great war with the Titans, the Oracle had foretold the demise of the Olympian gods and the destruction of Olympus. She saw that it would be brought about not by the hands of the Titans, who thirsted for revenge, but by the hands of a mortal, a marked warrior. Whoever controlled the marked warrior the fate of Olympus. Ikari! Paternal lesson spart of Pharaoh Ivan Kali. Came to retreat. 
retrieve the marked warrior. A mark they saw on the body of Demos. As he was taken away in front of his brother's eyes, little did he know of the fate that awaited him. Ares would bring him to the domain of death, the realm of Thanatos, a place no mortal had ever dared set foot. There he would remain imprisoned with no hope of escape. He would suffer years of punishment and torment at the hands of the God of Death. Born as loyal sons of Sparta, the two brothers trained and dreamt of one day joining the ranks of the great Spartan army. But that never was to be. On an ill-fated day, Demos was taken under the eyes of his brother Kratos, the brother who had vowed to always protect him. This single event would forever change the course of Kratos' life. His destiny, his cursed fate, had been set in motion. The loss of his brother would leave an indelible mark on him. A memory he could not forget. As he vowed never to falter again, Kratos adorned a red tattoo on his body in honor of Demos. A tattoo in the very image of his brother's birthmark. This tattoo would become a somber reminder for the man who would become a god. At first, the belief that his brother Kratos would come to save him kept him alive. But as the years lapsed, Demos lost all semblance of hope, and with it any thread of humanity left in him. The anger, the vengeance seethed within him, and lay dormant for decades. With little sanity left, it was this rage that made him endure, believing the day would come when he would once again face the brother who abandoned him. And when the Oracle looked into his soul, she saw a beast as well as a man. Once a captain in the Spartan army, Kratos had begun his command with only 50 soldiers. But soon his numbers grew to the thousands. His tactics were brutal, but effective. Drunk with power, he was feared by all, except one. His wife was the only one to brave his fury. How much is enough, Kratos? When will it end? When the glory of Sparta is known throughout the world. The glory of Sparta. You did this for yourself. His desire for conquest knew no bounds, but that which he desired would ultimately consume him. The youngest and boldest captain in the Spartan army, Kratos inspired fierce loyalty in his men. It had always been enough to carry them through any battle, until this day. The barbarians to the east numbered in the thousands, and descended on the Spartans without mercy. The battle lasted mere hours.
The discipline and training of the Spartans did little to stem the tide of the merciless barbarians. The soldiers faced a massacre, while their young captain faced the end of his brilliant career and his life. But to Kratos, victory was worth any price, even his soul. Ares! Destroy my enemies, and my life is yours. That desperate call for aid would come to haunt Kratos for all his days. By the gods, what have I become? Had it been that long since he'd almost met his end at the hands of the barbarians? That long since he'd traded everything? to save himself. Ares! The sky split apart, and the god of war stepped through. Descending from Olympus, he saw the makings of a god in a mere mortal. Ares would save Kratos. He would turn him into the perfect warrior, his servant on Earth. Only a simple pledge of loyalty was required. My life is yours, Ares. From this day, I shall carry forth your will. And his fate was sealed. As promised, Ares rescued his new disciple, bringing forth the power of a god. Destroying those who would slaughter Kratos and his men. Kratos. No mere sword and shield would befit the newest servant of the god of war. The blades of chaos, forged in the foulest depths of Hades. Once attached, the chains remained so, chained and seared to the flesh, a part of the bearer's body, a permanent reminder of Kratos's pledge. In return, ultimate power. The rage of Ares exploded from within. But soon, he would learn the true cost of such power. A cost too high even for Kratos to pay. The path before Kratos was clear, but still, the memories came rushing back, as familiar and permanent as the blades chained to his wrists. Memories of what he'd done in the name of Ares. Memories of how he'd become a servant to the god of war. A beast. His humanity robbed and replaced only with the will to murder. No one was safe. Entire armies fell before Kratos and the soldiers who followed him on his unending path of conquest. All in the name of his master. Those who offered resistance of any kind were dealt with quickly. They've built this temple to offer prayers to Athena! This entire village stands as an affront to Lord Ares! Burn this village! Burn it to the ground! Emboldened by the god of war, Kratos' army was ruthless, feared throughout the world for their brutality. All that mattered was conquest in the name of Kratos, their great leader, who had become near invincible. He feared nothing. But there was something about this temple, something forbidden. All his instincts told him he should never cross its threshold. Never step inside. Beware, Kratos. The dangers in the temple are greater than you know. But the village oracle's warning fell on deaf ears. His ambition would not be denied. All who opposed him would die. In that instant, 
The glory he had reveled in turned to horror. The image of his two final victims would stay with him for all his days. With that act, Kratos knew he could no longer serve his master. He had but one calling now, the death of Ares. He would murder the god of war. Ares, you will die for what you did that night. I will find you. For ages, the statue of Ares, son of Zeus, stood guard on the highest plateau above the great city of Sparta, keeping a watchful eye on the lands of Laconia. The Spartans lived in reverence to the god of war, as his ruthless reign remained seemingly endless. But the day would come when his rule would be challenged. Kratos, a Spartan general, would slay Ares and take his place as the new god of war amongst the rulers of Olympus. The Spartans would see him as one of their own, a true son of Sparta and a just ruler of their great city. But now, as a man, Kratos returned to Sparta, determined to find his mother and discover the truth. Kratos' mother was not long for this world. Before she passed, Kratos demanded she tell him the truth. His mother knew the price she would pay if she revealed the name of Kratos' father. But it was time, at last, for her son to know who he was. No word need be spoken to bring about the prophecy of the curse. She was transformed into a merciless beast, one which would destroy even her own son. Putting aside the last remnants of affection for his mother, Kratos destroyed the beast she had become. With her last breath, she spoke the name of his father. For Kratos was no mere mortal. He was the son of a god. He was the son of Zeus, the father of Olympus. And with that knowledge came the certainty that one day soon, he would take his revenge against the father, against the god who had abandoned him all those years ago. is complete. What's done is done. It cannot be undone. Spartan general was finally defeated. Driven mad, tortured and uncertain of his surroundings, the warrior found himself captured like a fly in the web of the Furies. Never. Kratos found himself defeated, and this time no Olympian would come to his aid. Satisfied, the sisters returned home with their prize. Within the walls of their prison, they would delve into the broken warrior's soul and entice Kratos back to his place as a servant of Ares.
It has been too long. Never. Never. We get past Delos, the happier I'll be. They say it is cursed. Too bad we can't sail south of Delos. Close to the defeat of the Furies, and finally, close to the freedom he so desperately sought. They say the great Archimedes built that statue for Apollo. Why do we stop at this cursed island? He's gone. Let us leave this wretched place. Quickly, before we are cursed too! Far too long. You can see her in the morning. Come. In time, you will forget. All that you have lost can be yours once again. If this is what keeps you in service to Lord Ares, then this is what you shall have. It... It is not real! I can be your reality. The hard part is over, Spartan. You have committed the ultimate sacrifice. Offer yourself to us completely, and you shall live in blissful illusion. Never! Then let death be your reality! No. What is the meaning of this? You have made a poor choice, Spartan. from this madness!
I would not have been strong enough to choose your path, Spartan. Orcos. I would have taken what my mother's offered. I would rather live in truth. I fear you may come to regret those words. Lord Ares still holds your bond. This cannot be. Before you killed them, my mother's once again made me your Oathkeeper. For you to be free, I must die by your hand. I do not understand. If you do not release me, my father will retain power over you, but even worse, I will live in eternal torture. I have spilled enough innocent blood. There is no other way, Spartan. Destroy the oath. Kill Ares. Have your revenge. I was never the warrior my father wanted me to be. But please, all I ask, give me an honorable death. With the death of Orcos, the blood oath to Ares was finally broken, and the painful truth rushed back to Kratos' mind. The truth of the murder he committed, the slaughter of his wife and child, the carnage forged from his relentless ambition, surfaced in perfect clarity and became the visions that would haunt him all of his days. tortured by the truth of his past. Kratos left the only home he'd ever known and set out to undo all that he had wrought. Suffering for years, Kratos, the once great general, now known as the ghost of Sparta, had pledged himself as a champion to the gods of Olympus. In return, he hoped only to rid himself of the nightmares that haunted him for far too long. But for now, his only respite, his only relief from the sins of his past, was found in the And on this day, Kratos had been called upon by the gods to confront an unthinkable evil, unleashed on the city of Attica by the invading Persian army. When men ask for the origin of Kratos, the true tale was never known. The truth is, Kratos, like all men, began life as a child. But childhood in ancient Sparta was a brutal existence. Children deemed fit and strong were trained to be warriors, the protectors of Sparta. The weaker children were caged, sent to the mountains to fend for themselves. They were not expected to survive. And while Kratos escaped the fate of the weaker children, his brother was not so lucky. The two, once inseparable, were now alone. Kratos would become legend, but the story of his brother has gone untold. A child left in the mountains, he had died years before. Coming of age in the underworld, he had but one desire, revenge against the brother who deserted him all those years ago. 
What fools? What fools? And you, the biggest fool of all, Kratos. The ghost of Sparta. The slayer of Ares. And now, the destroyer of Atlantis. You should take heed, Spartan. The destruction of Poseidon's kingdom will not bode well on Olympus. I care little for the gods. And yet you walk beside them. I did not ask for the throne of Ares. You were given the honor to walk among the gods, and yet you spit on it like it was dirt. The gods can keep their honor. I wish only to find my brother. Ah, yes, the other one. <laughs> Try if you must, but you will not succeed. You will never find him. And in the wake of your destruction, you have sunk the only path to your salvation. This is all that awaits you at the end of your journey. Not before I find Demos. Be wise, my son. And turn back now. Do not seek the domain of death. <laughs> Kratos was destined to bring about change so severe that it would shake the very pillars of Mount Olympus. His death was something that I could not allow. Destroy my enemies, and my life is yours! This is not the end. Who are you? I am the Titan Gaia, ever-present mother of Earth. I have watched you become a powerful warrior, and I have been with you through all the events of your life. But I can no longer simply watch. We will help you defeat Zeus. Death is an escape, Kratos. You are a warrior of Sparta, not a coward. Only a coward accepts death. I am no coward. Then you must fight. I will show you the way to the Sisters of Fate. Only with their power will you defeat Zeus. Zeus, he came under the cloak of darkness into Sparta. They begged for their god to save them, but you did not come.
left with no choice. I had to seek out the sisters to change the fate of our beloved Sparta. For I am all that is left. <coughs> You are all that is left. I have faith that our brothers of Sparta will live on through the true god of war. Let go of that which made you mortal. Your ties to this world are severed. You are ready to be a god. Even in death, the memories, the visions would not fade. For how could he forget spilling the blood of his own family? A cruel trick orchestrated by the guard of war. My wife, my child, how they were left in Sparta. You are becoming all I'd hoped you'd be, Kratos. Now, with your wife and child dead, nothing will hold you back. You'll become even stronger. You will become death itself. But as the flames consumed the temple, Kratos realized his true enemy was the god who once saved his life. The same god who had now taken everything from him. Ares! 
is. From this night forward, the mark of your terrible deed will be visible to all. The ashes of your wife and child will remain fastened to your skin, never to be removed. And with that curse, all would know him for the beast he had become. His skin white with the ash of his dead family. The ghost of Sparta had been born. In the end, in death, he had failed. Father, what's happening? I'm scared. In your selfish choice to be with your daughter, you have caused her ruin. No. Elysium falls to Kratos. She will perish. No! I will not let the gods take her from me again! Father! The choice was clear to him, yet impossible to make. To stay with his daughter meant the end of the world and the end of her. To stop Persephone and Atlas would mean forsaking his daughter forever. While his hatred and anger for the gods grew ever stronger, he knew there was but one thing to do. <laughs> At that moment, Kratos knew his destiny was not with Calliope. The fates were never that kind. By forsaking his daughter, he had abandoned the only person he ever cared for. What he had long sought and finally found was now forever lost. As the sun chariot rose higher in the sky, and the might of Helios shone once again on the world, Morpheus retreated to the shadows. Kratos gained little satisfaction from his victory. With years of servitude in front of him, he would need to confront his past and fight to reclaim the humanity he lost on the day his dark legend was born. The dire toll of his relentless battles finally caught up with him as Kratos fell from the chariot to the earth. Was this sacrifice too much for one to bear? even for the man who was known as the Ghost of Sparta. He has again served us well, Athena. He is a remarkable mortal. He is weak. Shall we help him? He'll live. They must. of Olympus have abandoned me. Now there is no hope. And Kratos cast himself from the highest mountain in all of Greece. After ten years of suffering, ten years of endless nightmares, it would finally come to an end. Death would be his escape from madness. In the end, knowing the visions of his past would never leave him, Kratos made his way to the bluffs overlooking the Aegean Sea. The gods of Olympus have abandoned me. Now there is no hope. And Kratos 
detached himself from the highest mountain in all of Greece. After ten years of suffering, ten years of endless nightmares, it would finally come to an end. Death would be his escape from madness. Flesh that burns, bones that break. But to break a man's spirit is to truly destroy him. Do you recognize this place, Spartan? The location of your greatest failure? Perhaps there is a chance you can undo the deeds of the past. The nightmares that had haunted Kratos for the past ten years had now taken form and substance. His past stood before him. of Kratos was not as it seemed. The gods had other plans. By the gods, can this be real? Born aloft like a feather, Kratos found himself risen from the sea and placed on solid earth. You will not die this day, Kratos. The gods cannot allow one who has performed such service to perish by his own hand. Ares' tactics were brutal. His path of destruction had to be stopped. But now there is an empty throne in Olympus, and a new god of war is needed. Take these stairs, Kratos. They lead to your ultimate reward. Is this all a game to you, Athena? It is not over. The gods will pay for this. Forgive me, brother. 